Welcome to the Embroidery Case Files. Where we try to answer the question, is commercial store-bought embroidery better than home embroidery? Hey fellow embroidery artists, the Embroidery Case Files is meant to be educational only. We want to show commercial errors in embroidery and how much people pay for these errors and how much you can improve your embroidery skills by not making these errors. We would like to raise the bar on embroidery and make it better. Let's go back and examine the stitches for this Embroidery Case File. All right, let's get into it. Now, this one is going to be a little bit different. Um, we've been showing on these opening files and showing you guys bad embroidery, bad commercial embroidery, bad store-bought embroidery, and bad embroidery in general, and we see a lot of it. This time, we'd like to open, permanently open, a case file on this one because it's absolutely fantastic. And it is commercial. It was bought in a store, and I think it's top notch. What do you think? Top I notch? agree. It's yeah, totally top notch. Some of the best embroidery I've seen, and it's uh, you know the old saying: keep it simple um, and learn your techniques, and you too can have gorgeous embroidery like this. So let's get at it, let's shall go. we? Yeah. So there's a few things that make this stand out. So one of them is perfection. Yeah. I'll give you that. Yeah. Absolute perfection. Perfection. If you look, the letters are nice and clear right here. They're, you know, small-ish letters. Um, these ones, now, obviously, this was, I'm going to guess, laser or die cut for Windsor. Probably. Uh, clearly, this is from yep. the University of Windsor, by the way, which um, our oldest daughter is in third year nursing school, and she bought this for <laughs> us, and I was like, wow. Um, just as a little history, she said she spent 20 minutes looking and making sure the embroidery was just perfect <laughs> before she bought it for me, because she knows I'll criticize it and everything. I so, might have something to say. Yeah, yeah, so she really looked and she did a good job. So hi, Sam, by the way, mommy loves you. Um, she did a good job of this. So the sheer perfection of it makes me very happy and very mm. happy to wear it, even though I didn't make it. True. Yep. So um, anyways, I was saying that this is obviously laser cut or, you know, whatever, die cut. Um because it's so perfect and that's what makes it that's one of the things now i'm not saying that you have to go and pay a fortune for die cutting or anything like that but you can get home um machines that will cut this fabric just as perfectly i do it yeah, all the time we have a couple of them we have yep. more than one which we'll do some videos on that at one time remind me someone in the comments and uh, you can have these results. You can absolutely have these results. Mm -hmm. Not hand cutting, but doing it with a machine. And that's one of the things that stand out. Now, I'm a fonty kind of person. I absolutely love this lettering. This the is, small one? Yeah, yeah, the smaller one. I don't know if, would you say it's small? I guess it's on the small it's side. It's smaller compared to the other. I mean, this one's extremely large, but it's also the applicator. What's the letter? measurement of that? Would you say? Oh, let's um, get a ruler. Get a ruler. <laughs> Many rulers will help. Really? Yes. Can you leave that in? The knot. Okay, so let's measure this. These letters are upside down. Ha! Let's try it again, people. These letters are just about three and a half inches so that's a good size those are large letters now if you were to do these letters with satin stitches that would be a mistake because they're so large they're too big way too big yeah you could do switch the satin to tatami it still wouldn't look as nice as this now the top letters let's see yeah the top letters they're i'm gonna say they're quite small they, they are inch. way under an inch yeah absolutely they're one and a half centimeters okay um so they're quite small and i think they're really well done so there's no um you know they're not too dense you can't really feel that they're too dense right. they're they're spread out enough i like i actually really like the spacing on it 
um, which makes it and the curvature of it. Mm -hmm. You can do that really quickly and easily in Hatch or E4, um, a lot of programs. But the the curvature is really smooth. And the satin's not too big, so it's not going to snag on anything. No, absolutely, it's not. And uh, it's obviously stabilized properly because you can't see any underlay. You can't see through the letters. I'm going to do a nice uh, picture close up and pop that up there. You can't see the uh, fabric underneath the letters, so which is really nice, really nice. Another thing about the perfection I'd like to point out is there is no puckering. None. None whatsoever. Not, not even up here where you would expect maybe a tiny little bit. There's none. No. So this Perfect. is, it can prove to you guys that if you know what you're doing and you hoop things properly and you use the correct stabilizer that you can have perfect lettering just like this this is smaller size lettering and it is perfect there's no puckering there's no shifting there's no density issues there's no problem so if you learn how to do embroidery right you can do this mm -hmm. so it's a good learning thing absolute perfection i'd like to point out here on the back the stabilizer is correct it's one piece of cut away we don't often see that also when they cut it away they left enough room you need to leave a quarter of an inch half an inch is even better and trim it up now you don't want to trim um, in between the first set of letters and the second because then you will have some stretching so one piece that's how to do it properly yeah that is that leave all of your stabilizer in there. the the trimming shouldn't be a huge event it shouldn't the, the, this is what the back of embroidery looks like. Whether you like it or not, that's what it needs to look like to work properly. Most embroidery is meant to be looked at from the front, not both sides. Yeah, it doesn't matter what the back looks right. like. So if you take a large amount of time and you trim in, be, in between here, you're going to wreck your embroidery. This is what it's meant to look like. Also, you can see that their machine was nicely tuned. You can see that there's no... You know, bobbin errors, there's no, there's hardly even enough stitches too. But you can see that everything on the back, even though it's the back, okay, and you see the, the stabilizer, it looks neat and tidy. Um, I hear a lot of people complaining about that on Facebook, that the back of their embroidery looks messy. Um, that looked neat and tidy. It looks like the back of the embroidery, mind you, but I think it looked neat and tidy. So we talked about the backing and we've talked about the perfection and how pretty this is in the front. Um, I'd like to point out that there's no density in it. Like it's no. not a dense design. Even though there's two appliques, um, it did, they did it really well. There's two appliques, but there's not thick satin stitches. No, they, they cut back on the satin. They went with a zigzag actually. Uh, which is a it's a specific style but you can see the balance in it because we've done videos on um, applique and there's two appliques and then there's a lot of stitching over it mm -hmm. and that was completely unflexible it was awful it was terrible so it's about balance now just be clear even though um, we've had a couple of uh, we do have a couple of commercial um, embroidery digitizing programs and there are ways in the program that you can eliminate you know even up to 50 percent of the stitches and they stay it'll look the same that's not what we're saying to do because that ends up looking cheap cheap, cheap. if you do that so if you have something that's a hundred percent embroidery and you reduce the stitches just to make it stitch faster it looks cheap so just like something that's too dense too thick like the multiple appliques looks like you don't know what you're doing um or the commercial for it was a hockey shirt that we showed you guys um cheapening out on the stitches gives it a cheap effect what you want to do is learn how to balance like this i think it's a perfect balance there are two appliques um, I really like the first, the white one here at the bottom. It's all one piece, so, so that's quick placement. Yep. And these ones are kind of fuzzy, and it looks really good. And what they've done is, for the white applique, there's a white zigzag that fits perfectly in. And for the blue applique, there's a blue zigzag. So I'm going to think that this wouldn't take much time to do, would it? 
No, it should be pretty quick to put together. Pretty quick. Time is money. Time is money. Time is money. So we're not saying reduce your stitches and make everything stitch out fa faster. Uh, we are saying learn the skills to balance out um, how it would go. If you had this with satin stitches around, I'm thinking it would take twice as long. Well, if not three times as long. Yeah. yeah. Time is money. Um, so make sure you learn. This is part of the skills with embroidery. Um, you know, commercial stores, commercial programs, commercial anything don't necessarily do it right. But I think if you look, if really good embroidery catches your eye, look at how they did it. And you can see it's a perfect balance. I love the small lettering. I love the large lettering. They use the right um, stabilizer on the back. It sits nice and flat. It's not too dense. Um, I'd also like to point out that you can do this embroidery on any embroidery machine. You do not have to have a commercial embroidery machine to come up with this kind of result. No, it can be done on a single needle. Anything, anything. Any you just have to yep. know the skills. I see a lot on Facebook that people are saying that they want to upgrade to a commercial I've seen machine. That too. Yep. I don't really think it's an upgrade. I don't think it's going to, you know, because you get a new machine that you will suddenly do this embroidery because it's commercial. Do embroidery like this. I think if you have the skills, you can do this embroidery on a single needle machine, even, you know, a $500 single needle machine. Um, it just might be harder to hoop. And, and of course, it's going to be smaller hoops. You need a relatively big one. So mm. maybe that doesn't completely apply. But you know what I'm saying there. But even with the hoop size, I mean, you can get that with semi-industrial. You don't need commercial to get a big enough hoop to do to this. To do this one specifically, no. no. And personally, I don't think we've got a, a commercial uh, Barrett, and, and I love him. His name is Barry. And he comes with, uh, we bought a huge, huge hoop on it. And I tell you what, it's almost not impossible to use. We rarely use it because it doesn't hold stuff tight enough. And it's huge, it's hard to maneuver, mm -hmm. and it's really hard to hoop because everything slips. There's so many areas to slip, and you can't just pack it up with stabilizer and think it's okay. It no. actually broke. That's the one that's broken The downstairs. biggest one, yeah. Yeah, because it's so hard to use, and I don't know if it dropped or whatever, but that's the only hoop I've ever had snap. So the point of this, um, we can't close this file because this file is going to stay open. This is to show you guys what excellent embroidery looks like and to let you guys know that you can do excellent embroidery on any embroidery machine. It's the skill, not necessarily the machine. I will say that some machines stitch better than others. I don't want to get into that, um, but the skills are what makes the embroidery. Yeah. And it's your education. Yeah, it's your education. It's your learning, your density, mm -hmm. your digitizing. It's all of that put into one. So every element is to, you need to learn to come up with embroidery like this. And this is the goal, frankly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is the goal. That's This is what I strive to get whenever I create anything. Anything. And stitch it out want. and test stitch it out. And if it's not mm -hmm. perfect, then do it again. But you can do it. Everyone can do it. So this file is going to be left open. Hopefully yep. we'll find some more examples of excellent, excellent embroidery. Yeah, we're not all about the bad. No, it helps we'll learn, though. It, you learn from the mistakes. Yeah, that's that was the point of opening <clears throat> case files is that you will learn from uh, costly mistakes. So if we can point out the mistakes, mm -hmm. then you won't do them. But it's nice to show really good embroidery yeah. too. Um, but, uh, you know, it, every little bit helps. So watch these and you guys can learn. Um, I guess we'll have some more uh, hockey embroidery because sadly, oh, no. I know, Beatrice has so much of it. It's just, they're perfect examples. So no offense to the hockey industry. She just happens to have tons of crappy embroidery and it's great for everyone to learn so uh we'll see you guys in the next video and stitch you later bye okay.